In the previous video, we saw how we could use the beam bending equation shown on the screen in order to calculate various parameters for a beam. In particular, we looked at how we could calculate the bending stress, sigma, and the radius of curvature, r, for a beam, which was being subjected to a known bending moment, m. Now what we're going to be looking at in this video is the method that can be used to select universal I-section beams, and there's some British standard tables that we're going to be using to help with this process. Now, as we said previously, we have a three-part equation here, sigma over y equals m over i equals e over r. And we're going to be using the first two terms in this formula, because what we're interested in is how we select a beam based on its second moment of area i and distance from neutral axis y. We could also use this process if the important thing was the radius of curvature as an example, or the deflection of the beam, but we're going to focus on the stresses acting on the beam. So for beam selection, we're going to introduce a new variable, and it's called the elastic section modulus, and it's represented by the letter Z. So Z is known as elastic section modulus. And elastic section modulus actually has the units meters cubed, or at least they're its SI units. And we'll see why that's the case in a moment. Now, if we refer to our formula on the right hand side, I'm going to rearrange this. And the first thing I'm going to do is multiply each side by i. So what I'll get is sigma i over y equals m. And then the second thing I'm going to do is divide each side by sigma. And I'll get i over y equals m over sigma. Now i over y is what's known as our elastic section modulus, and it's represented by the letter z. Recall that second moment of area was measured in meters to the full, and distance from the neutral axis was measured in meters. Therefore, when we cancel those units out, we're going to be left with units of meters cubed. So i over y, is represented by the letter z, and it has the units meters cubed. The way that we calculate the required elastic section modulus for a beam is by doing the bending moment acting on the beam over sigma. So what we can do is we can calculate an ideal value for elastic section modulus, then using British standard tables, we can select a beam with an elastic section modulus slightly higher than our requirements, just to incorporate a small safety factor. Now in previous videos, the shapes that we looked at were very basic. We had rectangles, we had hollow rectangles, and we had regular eye section beams. But the complication comes when we have more complex shapes. It becomes far more difficult to calculate the second moment of area. And in particular, when we look at eye section beams, they have webbed sections and so on, which can make that calculation even more difficult. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. And in the first example, we're going to have a bending moment of 45.5 kilonewton meters. And we're going to have a maximum allowable stress of 80 megapascals. Therefore, our optimal Z value is going to be 45.5 kilo, 10 to the three, divided by 80 megapascals, or 80 times 10 to the six, giving us an optimal Z value equal to 5.6875 times 10 to the minus four, and our units there are meters cubed. Now, when we look at the British Standard Tables and we identify the column for elastic section modulus, one of the things that we'll notice is that the units are actually stated in centimeters cubed. So although our SI units are meters cubed, for simplicity, the tables work in centimeters cubed. So we need to be able to convert our answer for elastic section modulus into centimeters cubed. Now when converting from meters cubed to centimeters cubed, I like to think of a simplified way of doing this. And hopefully you'll be aware that if we want to convert from meters in to centimeters, well, we know that there's 100 centimetres in a metre. So one metre is 100 centimetres, 
Therefore, our conversion would be times 100. But in this example, we're not converting from meters to centimeters. We're converting from meters cubed to centimeters cubed. Therefore, our conversion is 100 cubed. 100 cubes actually a million, but this is a much more simplified way of thinking of that conversion. So if we take our z value in meters cubed and we multiply that by 100 cubed, then we're going to get an elastic section modulus equal to 569 centimeters cubed to the nearest whole number. So now let's take a look at our British Standard Tables and we're looking for a beam with an elastic section modulus above 569. Okay, so pictured on the screen here, we have the British Standard for Universal Beams. And at the top we have a diagram which identifies various different lengths and dimensions, the width being B, the overall height being H, we have the thickness of the central webbing being S, and the thickness of the flange being T, and so on. Now, as mentioned before, calculating the second moment of area accurately for that shape would be quite a difficult task. And so instead we use the elastic section modulus. Now, as we move from left to right on the table, on the left hand side, we have the beam designation. And the beam designation is an identifier for the beam. So once we determine what beam we want, if we then make a note of the designation, then we could contact a beam manufacturer and state that designation and we would know that we were selecting the right beam. Any manufacturer should then be able to supply the same beam because these are manufactured to British standards. So as we move from left to right, we have various different columns. We have one for second moment of area. We have radius of gyration, which is something we use when we have columns rather than beams. And here we have two columns for elastic section modulus. Now the reason we have two columns is because one column is for when the beam is mounted on the XX axis, and one column is for when the beam is mounted on the YY axis. Now in the last tutorial, we talked about how the orientation of this beam would affect its resistance to bending. As the beam is pictured here, a force on the top of the beam would cause less bending than a force to the side of the beam. So what we're looking for is the beam's resistance to bending when it's mounted on the XX axis. We want to optimize the orientation of the beam to resist more bending. Now, as we said, we need a beam with an elastic section modulus of 569 or above. And we're looking at the XX axis because that's where it's more resistant to bending. You'll see that all of the beams on the first page have a much higher elastic section modulus than is required, ranging from nearly 16,000 to 2,500. And we're looking for a beam with a value of 569 or more. So if we scroll down to the second page, and we're looking at the same column, elastic section modulus on the XX axis, we see towards the bottom of this page, we have some beams that are likely to be suitable. And if we scroll down onto the next page, we have the smaller beams. Some are not gonna be suitable, whereas some would be suitable. So we have a required elastic section modulus of 569. So as we look at this page, there's a beam here, which would be suitable. It has a designation 305 by 127 by 48. So we could select that beam. It would be suitable because its elastic section modulus is 616. Now we could over-engineer the beam, and we could go for the beam at the top, which has a designation 305 by 165 by 54, and that has a much higher elastic section modulus of 754. The consequence of that is that the beam is roughly 6 kilograms heavier for every metre. So at the moment, the beam that looks most suitable is 305 by 127 by 48. Let's take another look at the page above. And here we can see that there is a beam with an elastic section modulus of 576, bearing in mind our requirement is 569. And as we move to the left hand side, we can see that this beam has a mass of just 39 kilograms per meter. So based on that, the most appropriate beam for our application 
is going to be the beam with designation 356 by 127 by 36. Okay, so now let's take a look at a second example. And in this example, we're going to use a much higher bending moment. And we're going to use a bending moment of 1.2 meganewton meters. So our bending moment is 1.2 mega newton meters. And we're going to have a maximum allowable stress of 145 megapascals. Okay, so the first step is to calculate our Z value in meters cubed. So we need to use SI units for our bending moment, 1.2 times 10 to the 6. And we need to use SI units for our stress, so 145 times 10 to the 6, giving us a Z value in meters cubed equal to 8.276. times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. So we're going to use our same conversion factor as we used previously. We're going to multiply that answer by 100 cubed to convert from meters cubed to centimeters cubed. And that gives us an ideal Z value of 8276 centimeters cubed. Okay, so once again, let's take a look at our British Standard Tables. Okay, so in our second example, we require a beam with an elastic section modulus of 8276. Now, as we look at this first page here, we can see that this page has beams with an elastic section modulus ranging from 15,000 to 2,500. So the likelihood is there will be a suitable beam on this page. As we scroll up here, we see that there's a beam with an elastic section modulus of 8269, but we're looking for a beam with an elastic section modulus slightly higher than that. If we selected this beam, then the stress would exceed our requirement of 145 megapascals. Therefore, we're going to need to go with the next beam up, which has an elastic section modulus of 9501. Any of the beams below that point would be under-engineered. Therefore, our beam designation is 914 by 305 by 253. Let's take a look at one more example, except this time we're going to use a given beam designation and bending moment, and we're going to calculate the stress on that beam. Okay, so in this final example, we're going to use a beam with designation 762 by 267 by 134. So we need to know the elastic section modulus of that beam. Now, if we highlight that row, we can see that mounted on the XX axis, that beam has an elastic section modulus of 4018. So let's take that value now and a given bending moment and determine the stress that would act on that beam. OK, so in this final example, the beam that we're using has an elastic section modulus of 4018. Now it's important to point out that the value from the tables is in centimetres cubed. And when we do our calculations, we need that value in metres cubed. At the bottom of the screen we have our conversion factor to go from metres cubed to centimetres cubed. But we want to go from centimetres cubed to metres cubed. So in effect, we're working in the opposite direction. Well to work in the opposite direction, all we need to do is divide by 100 cubed instead of multiplying by 100 cubed. Once again, it's useful to think how we would get from centimetres to metres and then just cube the linear conversion. So 4018 divided by 100 cubed equals 4.018 times 10 to the minus 3. Now that's in metres cubed and that's our value for Z. OK, now we have our value for Z, we can take our original formula, Z equals M over sigma, and we can determine the stress on that beam for a given bending moment. So the way that we would rearrange that is by multiplying each side by sigma and then dividing each side by Z. We get sigma equals M over Z. 
Let's take a value of m equal to 125 kilonewton meters. And let's calculate the stress on that beam. Sigma equals m125 kilo is times 10 to the 3 divided by z, which we've just said is 4.018 times 10 to the minus 3. And again, that's expressed in meters cubed rather than centimeters cubed. So our final answer for the stress acting on that beam is 31.1 megapascals. So in this video, we've seen how we can determine the required value of Z, the elastic section modulus, when given a maximum bending moment and a maximum allowable stress. And then we've seen how that value can be used to select an appropriate beam. We've also looked at this in reverse. We've selected a beam and determined the elastic section modulus. And then we've used that to determine our maximum allowable stress from our maximum bending moment.